Sorry I'm late, my kid is like hungover. I don't know how else to describe it. She, well, like I finished my workouts this morning. We woke her up and she said, I don't want to get up. I'm cold. And then she just laid down on her tummy in the crib for like another 15 minutes. And then we were like, hey, we got to get ready. So we like picked her up, you know, put some clothes on her. And she was just like, I want to sleep. And then brushed her teeth, brought her downstairs. And she was like, I need juice. So I gave her some juice. And then as soon as I gave her the juice, she just like tried to fall asleep with her head on the dinner table. And I was like, She's, she doesn't seem sick. <laughs> she has no runny nose. She says she doesn't have a sore throat. No signs of gastrointestinal distress. But uh, she's, she's eepy, that's for sure. So we're letting her stay home today. I think, honestly, she's just... Pardon me. She's getting her, um, her night times calibrated. Like when I picked her up from daycare yesterday, the daycare worker was mad at me. Because she was like, your daughter didn't nap. And I was like, you know, Tobey Maguire, Spider-Man 1. Like, I, I feel like I missed the part where that's my problem. Like, <laughs> yeah? Okay, okay, one second. Okay, uh, some signs of gastrointestinal distress. <laughs> the timing was, was beautiful. It's not me! It's not me yet. It's my daughter. I started the stream and for two minutes I was like, I don't know what happened, but she seems kind of hung over today. Like she's not sick, but uh, she's tired and she said she wasn't feeling like perfect. And then um, she threw up, which is also a symptom of being hung over. But I think probably actually she's got some kind of did communicable illness from the daycare and I'm like oh fuck it please like, after we cleaned it up I was like I deloused myself because I'm like my ass is not getting norovirus again please god I, I have she had it in January thus I got it in January oh man that was a <laughs> I remember Kate was in Korea and I was just like more lethargic than I've ever been in my entire life and like going to the bathroom every 30 minutes to 60 minutes and my stomach hurt so much. I think I'd, I had her in the high chair watching her iPad for like 12 hours and I just had Seinfeld on Netflix. So I was like drifting in and out of consciousness. I was like, this is the worst week of my entire life without a doubt. But there's been a few of those. Anyway, <clears throat> yeah, the screen time that week, that blew out the average for sure. But that was like, um, that was a, uh, like a, hopefully a once every few years sort of event. Please, God, don't be norovirus. <laughs> oh, don't be anything more serious than norovirus either. But please, God, I, at least with norovirus, it sucked really bad. But it is like a 48 hour thing. I guess it could be worse than that. I remember the worst part of it too, was that I went... So I had to leave my daughter out of daycare for like a week. And then when I brought her back, I was talking to one of the moms at uh, pickup. And I was like, oh, so did you guys get norovirus too? And she was like, what? Oh, no, my husband was pretty sick, but I didn't get it. And also like they were friends with another daycare family. And they were like, uh, their husband got it, but the wife didn't get it either. And I'm like, what the hell? Sexist, sexist virus. Only... Uh, in, infects men, apparently. Miss Andrist, so true. Also, apparently you get no um, immunity. Like, when you get norovirus, you have immunity for, like, a month afterwards. And then after that, like, as few as three virons can make you get norovirus again. God, I hate men. What the? What did I do? I didn't do anything. How much weight did you lose on norovirus? I don't know. Like it, it happened real fast. I wasn't in the. I wasn't like. <laughs> oh, let me step on the scale really quick. Whoa, <laughs> sixty-eight kilos. That's crazy. When I had the uh, food poisoning, though, I was. I don't know. I lost something like like fifteen pounds in two weeks, which was was fucked up. <laughs> that was really bad. 
I was eating like an entire bag of family sized chips every day and still losing like a pound a day. And I was like, this is what dying feels like for sure. Like, you know, you ever see like a, a symptom of a disease and it's like unexplained weight loss and you're like, bro, that, that can't even, it's just calories in calories out, bro. That was unexplained weight loss. I, I feel like I was eating like 4,500 calories a day and losing the equivalent of 3,500 calories in mass, which is insanity. Hello. Things on the shelf? Pog? Yeah. Kate, check it out. I bought pot. <laughs> Get, it. Get it? She, you don't want to see. I don't want you to ever experience your spouse looking at you with the look she just gave me. <laughs> oh, man. This, that, was, that is the ick right there, for sure. Hey, NL, Spindrift uses real fruit juice for flavoring. Unlike bubbly. Okay, but like, if it, re if it uses real fruit juice for flavoring... I don't have anything against... Uh, <laughs> it's heavy you piece energy, what a name. I don't have anything against fruit juice, but like, is it still zero calorie? Or, or what? Is it, it must have like a negligible amount of, of calories or something? It's like nine calories, five cal- Okay, five calories is like, I'll give you that one, that's zero. I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna split hairs over five calories. Have you talked about the thing that sprays a scent? Hang on, it sprays a scent so it makes you take something when you drink it, taste something when you drink it, but it doesn't actually add anything to the water? I have never seen that. It's an interesting idea, but I'm very skeptical of any scientific invention that invokes smells. Because I feel like I have been waiting for smell-based technology to reach the mainstream for like 30 years. And every year, it's like, next year, next year, the Internet of Smells is coming out. Games that can, when you shoot somebody in The Last of Us and they shout, Don't kill me, I have a child! You will be able to smell their aqua velva cologne. smell a vision would make Twitch go crazy? I just don't know what kind of bandwidth you would need. I guess you wouldn't live transmit a smell, right? You would simply be like, I want today's stream to smell like coconuts, and then it would like emit or something. What's your stench right now? I mean, I'll give it to you straight on average. Like, I smell pretty good. Not the best smelling person in the world. That would probably be mouth, honestly. But I do, I mean, I shower every morning, literally like 15 minutes before the stream starts. So take on babies smelling good. I don't think you have to have kids to think that babies smell good. I think that's just something that's kind of like baked into the human genome. They do smell good. There's something about, I don't know what it is, but it's like a new car smell. <laughs> it's called Air Up. Someone says stands can't stop talking about it. You know what they should do? I shouldn't even tell you this because this is a good idea. It's the same, it's a 24 pack of water, 12 pack of water with the air up, so it sprays something as you drink it, but it gives zero calories. But it's like the birdies bean swazzles. You know, the ones where some of them taste like uh, buttered popcorn and some of them taste like vomit. And you don't know until you crack the can. So sometimes you're like, oh my God, passion fruit. And sometimes you're like, ah, oh, diarrhea. You gotta drink it. You gotta drink 330 milliliters of diarrhea. <laughs> Oh, dude, that would go crazy on uh, college campuses. Oh, man, that would be sick. I'm bringing that idea to Shark Tank. Mark Cuban, can you explain to me why someone would willingly want to drink diarrhea? Mark, 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 just relax, Mark. Mark, you got to use your imagination for this one, okay? I drank some foul tasting things in my life. Europe has a lot to answer for. One time in, when we still used our P.O. box, somebody sent us something called Underberg. Underberg. And it's like a, a Northern European digestif that tastes like pure poison. 
and it's alcoholic, it's goaded. It is not goaded, okay? They sent us like a six pack of Underberg. All right. So this is just tasting. Yeah, we're gonna open it up and we're, I, I showed them all the what's in the box and now we're gonna eat them. Let's not bury the lead, Kate. Underberg, this... a favorite drink of German punks and construction workers. Recommended after a heavy meal, but be careful, it is quite strong. Well, Drink directly out of bottle. I just had a hot dog, which was delicious. Why, why, by the why, way. why are you opening the new one? We're gonna share. We're gonna have one no, each. Uh, no, no, no. Yeah, one no, each. No, no, no. It's 44%. This man. is, this is I'm what? I'm not wait, drinking wait, wait, wait. one. Okay, uh, this is 20 milliliters. Yeah. So at 44%, it's actually less than one shot of alcohol. Okay. We should have one each. No. You're not gonna have one each. No. I thought I'm, you were supposed to take gonna... it down in one go. Drink no. directly out of the bottle. It's a 44% alcohol. It says, be careful, it is quite strong. It's, it's as strong really? as like vodka. Yeah, it smells like um, like a, a schnapps or an ouzo. It's like a licorice. <laughs> <laughs> it's like... I put it way too deep in my nose. It smells like like Jaeger kind of. It smells like Jaeger roster, yeah. <laughs> I'm gonna hold on to. Oh my god, you didn't even do a countdown. Oh man, <laughs> that is uh, not my favorite. Yeah. I can tell you that much. Is this the beer that they were talking about? This is not a beer. This is I mean, maybe it's a beer, but it's a spirit, really. It's oh, I can just smell it. I don't want to drink it. Kid, try just a little bit. Yeah, I'm just gonna bump it. Just a little. You don't want more than that, I promise you. Oh my gosh, it's going hard. Ah! Tastes like medicine. It's... Ah! That's a very interesting flavor. This is Underberg. Um... I gotta be honest, even if I see this at my local liquor store, I probably would not pick it up. But, maybe good for digestion. Help you get to sleep at least. I think um, if you if you mix it with something, then maybe it'll be better. I'm just, where's my apple juice? I'm gonna get my apple oh juice. Oh my lord. I remember we had a friend over and we were already a little intoxicated. And then we were like, you should try this. And he drank the Underberg and we were like, he was like, this is one of the most foul smelling things and foul tasting things I've ever experienced in my entire life. And we're like, yeah, that's the point. And then like overnight, he threw up in our house, but he threw up in the sink instead of the toilet and then like cleaned the drain. But the drain for like six months, it never smelled the same. <laughs> it was not an ideal situation. Let's put it that way. How come drunk people always aim for the sink rather than the toilet? I think if there's an experience level too, I mean, there's a couple of reasons, okay? Sometimes you'll be pooping and then you're like, oh, I gotta throw up because alcohol has that effect on like every orifice. Um, sometimes you go to the bathroom and you're like, I don't, I'm definitely not gonna throw up. And then you're like, well, why are you in the bathroom then? And they're like, oh, I just feel like it would be nice to be in the bathroom right now. And then like a minute later, they're like, <laughs> Hey, NL, I saw the um, Dan Giesling video, Your Jawline's Crazy. Thank you, I think. I appreciate that. Hey, everybody. Northern Lion here, noted connoisseur of the roguelike genre. And uh, I've been doing a little soul searching. I got to chime in and, and come to the defense of my good friend Dan Giesling. He's getting roasted for saying that Slay the Spire is overrated and Hades is overrated, and after a lot of deliberation, I gotta say that I 100% agree with them. I mean, Slay the Spire, it's just cards. There's no guns. There's like, I don't know, maybe like four swords and a couple sharp objects. You don't even move, much less dump, uh, jump or double jump. And Hades, I mean, it's like if I wanted to read a book, you know, I would read Clifford the Big Red Dog, but I'm here to play video games with action and, you know, bright colors and stuff like that. Something exciting, thrilling boss battles, and obviously Hades just doesn't have that. So, you know, if we're the only two people on the planet who are right, that's hard, but it's something I'm used to, and uh, I, I just had to get my two cents out there. Especially considering I filmed it in true boomer fashion, like 
15 degrees below the horizon pointed up. Normally, like you, whenever people shoot vlogs, they always post it like this is the camera angle, like they hold the camera at a MySpace camera angle. And you're like, holy cow, I thought you were like 5'6", 290, but you look fucking slim, King. <clears throat> there needs to be a, a word for this, by the way. I've been brainstorming this in my head because I was talking about it yesterday. And I, I don't have any definitive data to back this up, but I was talking about how there's like a secret... There must have been a secret sauce in the 1950s where everybody that started a hamburger stand ended up turning it into like a, a multi international franchise, right? M Wendy's, Burger King, McDonald's, Hardee's, In-N-Out, Five Guys. It said, um, Five Guys is probably a little older, but anyway. Without even looking it up, it's all these uh, maladaptive thinking pattern Andes. They don't have any evidence except that in a stats class, they learned about survivorship bias. Call this observer bias. This one is... Um, um, actually, it was caused... This, this is just something we call the McDonald's fallacy. You need it, the, a knowledge of logical fallacies and biases is very important. Don't get me wrong. It can help you avoid falling into thinking patterns that don't serve you well. But you need to combine that with looking at the evidence itself. Otherwise, you are exercising the fallacy of ignorance which is that you haven't even looked at the fucking data and you're like, I bet this fallacy explains why you're wrong. We need to look at the data, man. It's the same motherfuckers. Like if, if you were talking to a doctor and you were like, well, my doctor said that I should like eat fruits because they're good for me. They would be like, that's an appeal to authority. Yeah, your ass though has no authority. So I would rather appeal to the authority of my doctor than somebody in Twitch chat who's done the Khan Academy bit on, uh, you know, logical fallacies so they can do better in their online debates. What are your thoughts on that? Okay, listen, it's not a Mexican alien, okay? It's an alien that was revealed by Mexico, and it's real. It has to be real because it looks fake. I don't know what fallacy that is. If it looked real, I would be very suspicious. I would be like, that looks too real to be real. The fact that it just looks like a thirsty guy. The, the truth is out there, brother. It's just tall Yoda. My hypothesis is that it wouldn't... If it looked that... If the fake alien they had made to trick people looked that shitty they wouldn't show it. They would just be like, we have an alien corpse and we'll get back to you in six to eight weeks. Careful, they have front-facing eyes. They might be predators. I never thought about it that way. That's a scary thought. You ever see that thread on Twitter where the guy was like, here's all the scientific reasons that like Coke is better for you than water? And it was all like, yeah, yeah, there's like some sugar in it, but like, Look at all the, look at the minerals versus, like water has like almost none minerals. Look at all the micronesium that Coke contains, which is very important for calcium uptake in your bones and stuff like that. Oh, we are, we are raising a new breed of insane person on the internet these days. Put me up against Hey It's Jordan again. Did you see the glasses are frauds take? Yep, I saw that one. What's the one thing that your optometrist doesn't want you to know about? The fact that you do not need glasses. That's right, you may have been told that you need glasses, but that's actually a lie. There are mental, emotional, physical, and even spiritual reasons why you may not be seeing, and I'm here to tell you that that can be healed. If you want to learn more, read the comments. We, I, these people have always existed, but there's like a, there's definitely like a new degree that the insanity is being spotlighted for sure. There's a, there's some crazy ones. One of them is, you know, glad you don't need glasses. Um, if you stop wearing glasses, your eyes will get better. It is true that when you start wearing glasses, your eyes get worse, but that's because you can finally like see for the first time in your life. Like, you'll always need to get stronger glasses until your eyes get so bad they can't get bad anymore. But the other one that I, and I, 
wasn't really like fully aware of the existence of this. That's a nasty team right there. There's a, a, a generation of Grifter that is anti-sunscreen. And I don't mean, like don't get it twisted. I don't mean that they're like, you should use sunscreens that like don't have this chemical in them. I mean, they're literally like, you should tan and burn yourself in the sun. Skin cancer is like made up by the deep state. And what's crazy is that like, probably like one of them is watching this video and they're gonna be like, normally I vibe with NL and his jokes, but this one kind of hit close to home. I, you should really do your own research before you like jump to conclusions like this. It's sad that you've been co-opted by the Illuminati to promote fucking, <laughs> I don't even know the name of a uh, sunscreen brand <laughs> anymore. <laughs> Coconut billies or whatever. Well, I've got to go to a work meeting. Have fun, everybody. But I'm sorry about all this stuff I said about sunscreen, okay? I don't know. I haven't done my own research. I, I'm joking. You're probably... You're probably a sunscreen believer, if I had to guess. I was talking to my dermatologist. He said you should put on sunscreen like every time you think about leaving your house. Seems like good advice, man. That being said, do I follow that advice? Not really. I would say, on average, if I'm going outside for more than... I know I'm going to be out and about for more than 60 minutes, I will put sunscreen on. And I, I always put it on my kid. But if I'm just going outside for a bit, I do not put it on. I know that I should, but I'm like, man, eh, everybody's got to make their choice. <laughs> I'll be a foamy, I'll be an awkward lawnmower. When my uh, Ryobi starts to lose power after eight minutes of mowing my lawn. You have a Ryobi lawnmower? Yeah. You got a problem? You have a lawn? I know, it's pretty sick. <laughs> Those batteries suck ass and they're like $200. Well, luckily, I got a second battery pack when I bought my Ryobi leaf blower and string trimmer combo. So, and that was only like $700. <laughs> and they last long enough that I can, when one goes out of battery, I can hot swap to the other battery pack. And I could pretty much, I'm not saying I could go infinite, but I could, uh, I could keep it running for a little while. Not to brag. What time of the year do you stop mowing? I gotta be honest, I gotta ask you. I don't know the lawn mowing process. Because here's, basically we moved in and I was like, oh, we're gonna have to do like a lot of yard work. Um, and then it didn't rain for two months straight. So all of the grass died. And I was walking around like our neighborhood, like a fucking internal affairs officer. I would like every lawn was just dead grass. And then some motherfuckers had perfectly green grass, lush flowers and stuff like that. And I was like, you sack of shit. Don't you know there's water restrictions right now? You piece of garbage. It's turf. I don't think it was turf. I think they were waiting until like 4 a.m. when nobody was paying attention and then they were going. <laughs> That's none of my business. It could be painted, to be fair. You shouldn't have a lawn. You should just have clover. It supports the natural ecosystem. Listen, motherfucker, okay? You know how people say tipping culture went too far, too fast? And as a reaction to that, now people are like, I'm never tipping on anything. People don't want to hear it, but that's kind of where I'm at with like the increasing moralization of every process on earth. Like you got to take it bit by bit. There's a lot of things wrong with the world, okay? There's a lot of, a lot of structures in place that keep horrible people in power. We got to dismantle that, okay? Just leave the lawns alone on t so we can focus on the big problems first. Because as soon as you're like, every time you talk to somebody, you're like, I was mowing my lawn. They're like, mowing your lawn? Oh, you have grass? Actually, did you know grass is bad for the environment? It's all fucking bad, bro! 
We got to focus on the stuff that's heinous first. And then we can start to work. You never, it's like someone's unhealthy and you're like, well, the secret to running a marathon is this. No, just fucking go for a walk first, okay? Once we master the walking and we normalize that for ourselves, then we can start planting clover and stuff like that. It's not mutually exclusive. Yeah, but your ass isn't doing any of it. And then when I say that, you're like, well, oh, I apologize for the fact that I can't buy a house because of the housing crisis. And I'm like, literally, you're just building a box where you yourself are you know, spinning your way out of all criticism whatsoever and just deflecting it upwards. Like it's out of control. You gotta be something I can criticize you for. You're criticizing me for going outside, you know, once every two weeks and going Bzzz. Meanwhile, we got a fucking garden in the back. Bees are flying all over it going Bzzz. pollinating fucking all over the place. Meanwhile, now we're in a world 35% is the minimum tip on takeout. And grass is canceled. Can we just start with making sure that John Rick Ricciatelli is no longer the CEO of Unity tomorrow? And then work backwards from there? But it's, and I recognize I'm on a website that has been purchased by Amazon. But listen, as soon as your company becomes acquired, it's cooked. I'm calling it right here. It might take a little longer for it to be cooked if it doesn't go public. But if you get acquired by a public company, your company is fucking, it's just a matter of time. If it gets acquired by a private company and they're only behold, like there's less awareness of the liquidity there because you're not seeing the valuation change every single day. But as soon as, I think that there's a cycle, man. It's like founders are like, we want to do something like good for the world. And then they build it. And then the valuation goes fucking nutty. And there's a, no awareness, wait, let me rephrase. There's no expectation that it will become profitable while those people are still at the company, but it doesn't matter because <laughs> And then the founders have an incentive uh, to sell at insane valuations. They get their, that's the end state for a computer science degree from a good American university is selling your company for, you know, you get a payout in the hundreds of millions of dollars. You fuck off and start snorting ayahuasca and, you know, dealing with the damage you've done to the world, unless you're Mark Zuckerberg, which in a way is kind of respectable that this guy is just riding it out. I'm not saying you got to hand it to him, but I'm like, this guy could have, at any point, he could have been like, I'm done with Facebook, but he's a, a true believer, which is madness. But anyway, listen. <laughs> Where am I going with this one? Either way, then a new CEO comes in who used to be the fucking CEO of Dunkin' Donuts or something like that. He knows nothing about the business whatsoever. And they're like, we're going to... I know people normally don't like when the big bad private equity comes in and starts going, you know, mer, 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 but we're going to stay true to the values that made this company great to begin with. And then two years later, they're like, we're charging for oxygen. Every, every time you take a breath, what, you don't, you don't think it's worth paying for oxygen? Come on, man, you need it to live. Which is why I will never sell twitch.tv slash Northern Lion to a multinational public Fortune 500 com company. I will only sell to private equity who offers me well in excess of what it's actually worth so I never have to worry about working again. When are you starting your Mark Wahlberg daily routine? It is crazy. Like, I believe that Mark Wahlberg is busy. Now, that doesn't mean that I believe that what he is doing is work. There is a difference between the two. The dude legit woke up at 2.30 a.m., 15 minutes of prayer, People, people are roasting him for, for stuff that is not fair. People are like, oh, he wakes up at 2.30, but he doesn't do anything till 2.45. What's up with that? That seems pretty inefficient. Brother, you want him to put take a shit on there? Like, that's not sensible. What you should be roasting him for is that there's, there's gaps in the schedule. And the gaps, in my personal opinion, I have to imagine that that's where... 
a lot of that because I think everybody has some degree of downtime. I have to imagine those gaps are where the downtime is. But meanwhile, he's trying to say, like, check it out. There's no days off. I only have 30 minutes to play golf every morning and two hours to spend in the cryo chamber. At one point on his, um, his daily schedule, he has a snack that lasts for like an hour and a half, two hours or something like that. That's just not sensible. There's something going on in that snack period that he's not talking about. I bet he's looking at his phone. It's made up. I'm not saying everybody is lying about how much they're working. I do believe that he's genuinely, he's a busy person, whether that work has merit or not. I'm simply saying, I don't know, there's just something, I, I think we have to start talking about the existence of like, hustle psychosis. Like people who get really into like rise and grind type culture that are like, you have to grind your ass like every single day and like here's how to do it with it it fucks up your brain i honestly think it does like it's crazy to me that like once a day on twitter i get like an algorithmically served tweet that is like it's crazy that people think you can just post videos on youtube i hired a youtube consultant to help me make my videos even tighter and like look at what my metrics have done for the last month and i'm like it's the, the replies are full of people that are like, so true, so true, so happy for you, bro. And I'm like, can you imagine, just apply this to like any other, uh, what I would describe as an artistic medium. You imagine if like David Lynch was like, fucking check it out. Or David Cronenberg was like, I used a new cinematographer on Crimes of the Future and look at the box office receipts that we got. My analytics are so much better on Crimes of the Future than they were on my last three movies. And everyone was like, so true, David Cronenberg. David Cronenberg, we love seeing your weeklies from the box office. That's personal growth. No, you just be fucking like, dude, you made, you made a sick movie where um, Viggo Mortensen has like a liver that produces plastic or something like that. And it, it freaked people the fuck out, and that's cool. Like, it's... I get why, like, if... Because if you're, like, a YouTuber, it makes sense to me that you want to talk about your business. Because it's you, and people like to talk about themselves. But to broadcast, like, every day, like... It wasn't like, I made my videos better, I'm following my passions, I'm making, like, more... Uh, art with more merit or videos that are more interesting. It was just like, check out like my analytics. I'm like, why would your audience care? But I guess maybe it's different strokes for different folks. Maybe the videos have gotten better, but maybe like, I always, I mean, you gotta play the game a little bit when you're in the business. But whenever people are like, check it out, I changed the thumbnail on my shitty video and it did 15% better. And people are like, this is inspiring. I'm like, it's not inspiring. They didn't do anything. <laughs> it's, like, it's like when Lay's changes the design on the potato chip bag. And you're like, well, it's still, I mean, it's still barbecue on the inside. It's still tasty. Don't get me wrong. But like, you know, what are we doing here? Anyway. It's not like my videos are art. But I think at least over time, I've gotten less self-important about it. Eh? I'm way less self-important about it. I used to run a podcast with Dan about like best practices on Twitch and YouTube. It's the most self-important thing you can do. Nowadays, I don't even show up on time. Like this is personal growth. If you can't accept that, that's on you. It feels so good when you realize you still got it. <laughs> Oh, man. Blunt rotation with the two Mexican aliens. Please stop calling them then. They're, they're from outer space. They're not from Mexico. We already went over this early in the stream. And yeah, I would do a blunt rotation with the two Mexican aliens. Absolutely. They don't reside in Mexico either. Their bodies are interred in Mexico, okay? These are... Show some respect. They're our first visitors which prove without a shadow of a doubt the existence of intelligent extraterrestrial life in our universe. We are not alone. There's also some desiccated fucking E.T. looking motherfuckers who are like two and a half feet tall, <laughs> eight pounds. Oh, man.
they would not last through an Illinois winter, right? Am I right, fellow people from Illinois? They would not make it. Okay, but nice jellyfish, nice jellyfish. Try that in a small town. So true. Try landing your fucking stupid spaceship in a small town, idiot. If I found those aliens, I'm beating them to death. It's so fucked up that I definitely wouldn't. I would for sure be the guy that was like screaming, like, stop it, stop it. I'd be like crying. This would be so embarrassing for me. I don't even want to talk about it. <laughs> Best flavor of Haichu? I think I'm a peach guy. I was thinking about when I, when I taught in South Korea. It's so funny. I was thinking like, you know, think of the word rough. R-O-U-G-H. Rough. Think of the word bot. B-O-U-G-T-H. That's not, it looks like it should be buffed, but it's bot, okay. And I was thinking about how like my students would say like, teacher, how are we supposed to remember this? And it was like a, a Giga Chad meme. It would be like, oh, there's a lot of complicated rules. I before E except after C and except sometimes. And also these are the Mrs. Vandertramp words. Me as a teacher, Giga Chad moded. You just have to remember it. Does linguistic dominance ever make you feel morally superior to those surrounding you? Perhaps the feeling of a stronger mental? I'm going to answer your question with a piece of advice. Stop reading Substack. You've, you've gone too far down the rabbit hole. You don't believe anything can see the future except crypto-driven prediction markets. You use a dry deodorant that comes in a, doesn't come in a roll-on stick. It comes in like a tub and you got to put like a little, it's, it's made of silver iodide crystals, the same thing that the Chinese government uses to make it rain before big parades so that it's not going to rain during the parade. We've gone too far. I see it a lot, and I'm, I'm sad to say it. Is people trying to, like, lint their lives completely. You know what I mean? I couldn't think of a better way to express it. People min-maxing the way they put the bread... Do you put the bread down first before you get the sandwich going, or do you run the do you run the meat first? Well, I run the meat first because there was one study that came out of the University of Copenhagen that is like if meat touches cheese first, it releases a phytotoxin. It's just it's we're all gonna be here for a long time. I think we gotta come up with we we, we gotta we gotta honestly be kinder to ourselves. I guess is what I'm trying to say. You know, don't. You don't my personnel opinion. I think there's a time in your life for the pursuit of relentless self-improvement. You know, what's, what's the best way to do this? What's the best way to do that? Oh, I read an article on men's health that said uh, the best time statistically to jerk off to raise your testosterone levels as much as possible is like right before lunch. So I always tell my boss that I've got food poisoning so I can go to the bathroom before we have to go out and meet clients and stuff like that. You just... <sighs> Hopefully, hopefully you're going to be alive for like 80 years. That's, you can't keep that pace up forever. That's like saying, what do you, what's the best way to run a marathon? Just run as fast as you can for like four hours. Like it's not, it's just, it's, it's like the way that a child thinks that you would do that. You know, it's like me saying like, I would just never pit in Formula One. You know, it's not in the world of realism. What was this all in relation to? I don't remember. Do you feel superior by being linguistically good? Well, here's the thing. I took, I took issue, and by issue, I mean, I was just having a laugh at the end of the day. Oh! Please tell me someone got eliminated. We're so back! I, um, I simply took issue with the way that it was phrased. It was phrased very substacular, okay? Like, I've never heard the expression linguistic dominance, but I bet it comes from a newsletter you gotta pay like $5 a month to get access to. I may be wrong. At the end of the day, I'm just a guy trying to make people laugh. Get on it then? <laughs> oh, good thing I wore my brown pants.
We're so unbelievably back. We, we came second! We, we're probably not gonna come first. I'm not trying to sandbag. Come on, brother. Like, I'm looking, you got coconut armors, you got lads. You don't need to snipe, stream snipe me here. We can just queue a couple times and see how it goes, right? Not hitting the coconut armor, kind of devastating. You got me, Buffalo 50, you got me. I think being being positioned as a sniper team in a world where it's not really sniper driven is like, uh, that might have helped us out there. That was a good one. Can I tell you something insulting? I got an email from uh, Audible today. The subject of the email was ATTN colon, which is literally like when the government sends you an email that is like, we're going to throw you in prison. That's what it starts with. This is not something you would expect from like a subscription audiobook service. After the colon, it said, new Barbara Tuckman on sale. Barbara Tuckman is a historian who died in 1989. So, I, <laughs> I'm a little skeptical that this is uh, really new material, but at the same time, there should be like a price to be paid for these companies sending you emails that are like, we men's silk pants are on sale for 50% off for the next 36 hours. Call the FCC. Somebody else do it. I'm busy. Slash marker. Heretics fork. Wake up, honey. New deck builder with tower defense elements that looks a little bit like Vampire Survivors meets Slay the Spire meets Inscription just dropped. This is Heretics Fork. First, I want to say thank you to Raven Age Games for the sponsorship. Uh, I noticed that this was coming out and I'm excited to give it a chance here. Heretics Fork is a game where the souls are rebelling in hell, brother, okay? There's a little portal that you can use in hell and damned souls can get to that portal and escape to the world, which reflects badly on you uh, as a middle manager. So you have hired someone to uh, be trained as a staff member to stop people from getting their dang souls out of hell. You, you get cards that allow you to build towers and do attacks to stop them, and there may or may not be a little bit of a meta-narrative inscription type thing going on where it plays with your concept of what a game can do from the perspective of breaking the fourth wall. It did also have a demo in Steam Next Fest, and it soared to the coveted ranks of top 50 demos within that festival. So I'm excited to give it a try. I think it means a lot of people in chat will at least understand how to backseat me to the point where I can have some base level of competency, hopefully. If you like what you see in exclamation point heretic or check out the link in the video description below if you're watching on YouTube or scroll down below the video player and you can see the panel art demonstrating some art for the game. Now our guide for the tutorial here is uh, Demonic Clippy. Of course, Clippy went to hell. How many of your viewers do you think actually dealt with Clippy? Listen, Clippy was, I, I was like 11 when I first interacted with Clippy. And I, I never hated Clippy that much. It was only when I got older and Leo Laporte told me that he was detestable that I finally started to have a based opinion about him. I'm overwhelmed. Okay, this little thing in the center, Sinners are trying to escape from hell. We've been hired to prevent that from happening, okay? You play cards from a deck that you create on the fly in order to play towers or garrisons that spawn units that kill enemies to keep them from escaping from hell. That's the, this, we're on the very basics right here. We just, you have auto battler mechanics where you can combine Cards of the same rarity to create a, one random card that's a higher rarity. Or you can combine towers that are the same rarity to create the same tower but one level rarer, which will obviously make it better. Now give me a punish and just keep it there. 15% tower damage, end turn. And we're trying to survive as long as possible. Once you play them, they're permanently active. Yeah, you can, uh, you can click on them to use them when their charge is up, or I just have them set to like autoplay right now, which I'm sure is like, you know, there's some EU smugness, I'm sure, because um, I don't drive an automatic transmission. 
or sorry, I don't drive a manual transmission. I drive a, I drive an automatic car, and I'm sure I'm giving up some RPMs for that when I play, uh, when I play these on AutoCast. But so be it. Do you know how to drive manual though? I don't. No. I don't think I need to know how to drive manual in North America because, like, 99% of cars in North America are automatic to begin with. And then I'm trying to think of, like, what are the situations? I'm in Italy, I'm in the Alps, and then my, the, my tour guide who was driving the car has a heart attack and I need to drive our little 1986 Fiat 500 down the Alps in order to get him to the hospital, but I just keep going. And he dies. And everyone's like, why didn't you? He doesn't know how to drive with a stick. Come on, there's no way. Give me this purple so we can make a, a random gold later. Zombie apocalypse while on vacation in Malta? Listen, if there's a zombie apocalypse in Malta, I'm going down, brother, because that is an island. You can't, you can't trick me on a geographic trick question like that. Who's the baddie in the bottom right corner? That's me. Oh, wait, <laughs> never mind. <laughs> I guess we have to take an extra structure slot, but that's not what we're looking for. If you combine two of the same card, they will give you a higher tier of that same card if it's available. Oh. Well, in this case, I'm, I'm doubling up on these rocks to make another green. And then increases unholy damage by 10%. I'm doubling up on the unholies. And it, you, if this is true, excuse me, where's my... Uh, Where's my 20% unholy damage? I got one guide, man. I got lied to. Those two cards would have been sick. Who told you that? Don't do that. Don't gaslight me. Someone in chat said it. You saw it. Banish the hot rock. I need to have at least 13 cards in my deck. Otherwise, I get more rocks, okay? So I gotta, I gotta add another card first, but I keep... Oh, no! No, no! I'm going to die. Um, unless, well, listen, we should play our purple garrison then, and then we can't really play anything else. So let's just see if this garrison of snipers saves us. It didn't. <laughs> all right, all right. Hey, that was pretty good for a first try, I thought. $99. Claim me. Ooh. Oh, because we didn't have the... We hadn't unlocked a higher tier rarity yet. I see now. That's okay. Now, you know what? The one guy is redeemed because now we've unlocked the higher tier rarity. Chatter saved. What Peloton ride did you do today? 30-minute Samyo climb ride followed by... 30-minute Leanne Hainsby 80 ride, followed by 30-minute Sam Yo 70s rock ride, followed by 20-minute um, Hannah Corbin low-impact ride. Anyone else sinning in the hopes that NL will be the one to punish them? Just, just stop that, okay? <laughs> Ridiculous. Nice shift. That will totally keep management off my you-know-what for a two whole minutes. Speaking of wasting time, you've been deemed trustworthy enough for email access. Have fun. Can you respond to these emails? Imagine if it was my real email inbox. Milk Gong Press Release. Dear Press, if you're re reading this, it means we finally found a way to communicate to those outside of Purgatory. We apologize for the lack of updates on Milk Gong, our upcoming hit indie title, but we've been in what most would call development hell. Ha ha ha! We've been hard at work, shackled to our chairs in this unforgiving infinity, and are excited to finally announce we have given up on the possibility of ever re releasing this game. Part of that has to do with the inability to purchase a Unity license in Purgatory. <laughs> Great timing on this one. Uh, actually, that's pretty much the only reason. So if anyone can get us a copy of Unity, we promise we'll release Milk Gong within the next decade. Max, we swear. For immediate release. Okay, that is... That's a, that's a Silk Song reference. That's funny. Okay. Hang on. My actual e email inbox is open in, in the background. That's freaking me out. I think I did that myself, though. How many bathroom breaks is too many on an eight-hour workday? 
none of your business, honestly. If you if you got adults in your office, you know, I mean, there's probably a number that's that's too many. But I think definitely, like, if if they have to use the bathroom like once an hour, that's completely a okay. Maybe anything more than that, you might start to question it a little bit. But once an hour, once an hour is outside of the ba the bounds of normalcy. But I'm just saying it's where you can start to question it as far as I'm concerned. Otherwise, you better be damn sure they're looking at their phone in the bathroom. Otherwise, you're going to get sued. You don't get to ask me about my, my bathroom habits just because uh, I use your computer to, you know, you pay me 15 bucks an hour. You make 80 bucks an hour as a result of my labor. And you got the audacity to be like, why are you pissing so damn much? I'm just saying, if you're at your friend's house and you piss like once an hour, that's a little much. If you're at the boss, or if you're at the, if you're at work, I should say, not at the boss. <laughs> if you're at work, as long as those are real pisses, who are they to say you shouldn't drink so much water? Especially when they probably have like a, you. I mean, you, you got their hands completely tied, right? Because they're probably having like a hydration challenge at work. Whoever can go the most days drinking eight glasses of water a day wins like a $50 gift certificate to the local mall. Then all of a sudden they're going to be like, you're using the bathroom too much. Make it make sense, health and wellness. Excuse me, HR, HR, I'm uncomfortable. Moon moon pisses like every 45 minutes. First off, that information is something that I have no reason to know. This is a, a, a colleague, at least in the same industry. I should not know about their bathroom habits, but you shouldn't just be putting those on blast for anybody. Secondly, is he a noted sparkling water consumer? Drinks a lot of coffee? That'd do it. That'd do it for sure. I mean, I could drink three glasses of water and not have to pee over a five hour stream. But if I have like one can, one can of sparkling water, it's over. I'm pissing three times, without a doubt. If you hold your piss, you weaken your bladder. First off, I don't think that's true. Secondly, I hope that when they had that scene in Liar Liar, where Jim Carrey talks about, um, you know, I heard if you hold your pee habitually, it can make it difficult to sustain an erection or even become aroused. And then the judge is like, well, I think in that case, everybody should take a 15 minute bathroom break. I hope they did their research before they uh, made that scene, because that is like a foundational it's a foundational piece of knowledge for my generation. And if it turns out that that's misinformation, I mean, it would, it would break my heart, that's for sure. Did you know Jim Carrey can't lie in that movie? Okay, you know what? I didn't think about that. I guess in that case, it must be true. Okay, I mean, for now, why don't you go out there? And then we go rocks, hellfire damage, rocks, Hellfire damage? No? Okay, that's fine. It's fine. A blue? A useless blue? I will never uh, forgive you for that. Okay, end turn. You gotta play the Hellfire damage instead of combining. I was so ready to say thank you for your advice until you new lined and then wrote Jesus Christ afterwards. This, about, this game just came out today. It's my personal best by like a factor of 100%. People, then you would think that like on the run where I died instantly, people were like, nice try, nice try. You had the right idea. On this one, people were like, fuck you, go die. What's wrong with you? Touch grass. You think Mozart is in hell? I don't know, man. His music is like really good. <laughs> in my opinion. I don't know if his music is even good. All I know is that I've been told it's good for my entire life. So it's impossible for me to, to judge really. It is? All right, see? I mean, I'm just telling you, if I had the choice between Celebration Rock by Japan Droids or like Cantata Number Set by Wolfgang Amadeus Mozart, I'll be singing Knights of Wine and Roses before you even hear the woodwind section tune the first note, okay? Either way, I respect you. <laughs> I'm sorry I tell you, I think you, you range up immediately once again. Freeze your blue sunder and just you play your rock for essentially no reason. I, <laughs> I need the purple sunder. Oh, but if I save the blue... Oh! Okay, okay. We just got to go fast. 
You play the Repentors. You play Divine Light. Um, uh, this is there's there's too much shit on me for sure. Freeze two punishes and play them next time. If there is a next time. Okay, they actually got melted. We took zero damage. It's giving we're going infinite vibes. It's giving new world record vibes. You play your rocks. You, you pray for a green punish. We did not get it. You pray for a blue punish. We didn't get it. That's fine. You know what? No, it's not. You pray for a purple punish. <laughs> we don't really want Frankie fast hands, but we went for it. We're, and we know if we live through this level, we're going to need another gold anyway. So it's, we, I'd rather have the gold in our pocket, okay? Uh, we got to get purples to get golds. No? No? We took we picked all the best cards though. I'm crazy. We didn't get a um <laughs> we didn't get another structure slot, man. We gotta go luck up. We're still we're going infinite. Fraud. So we don't need a gold. In that case, pull me. Rock me. Green me. Range is crazy. Then, play your Punish. That's just the best card available. Play your Range. Also a very useful card. I would freeze your... You're always going to have something to do with that. And then I would freeze a blue to keep the chain rolling. Frankie's kind of useless for us. I think the Repenters are just not that good. That's alright. We play Punish. We play Hot Rock. Freeze me. Pass turn. They are zooming, man. Redemption's usable. I don't think it works in my deck because it just means that the gold that we play one in five times, it's always a tower, but one in five times, it won't be discarded. But like, it's so easy for me to make golds, not to be braggadocious, that like, it just doesn't seem super relevant to me. So I'll take a praise B and then combine your two golds. Reroll plus. <laughs> oh. Oh, that's a heck of a reroll. I would take a sunder, thank you. Most powerful reroll in roguelite history. Imagine this is a big risk, but imagine if this becomes a blue punish. Oh. Look at that. That's an insane card to keep in your deck. I mean, honestly, freezing a rock for upgrade potential. <laughs> now we just need to fill our deck with as many punishes and green range increases as we can get. We're gonna set a new world record. I'm so ready. Another punish? Don't mind if... And imagine if this gave us a blue punish. Oh, oh, I'm so fucking stupid. I'm so fucking stupid, bro. Why would I do that? I don't know, because it could still become a purple punish on a random reroll. Oh! No shot. I don't even think we've had to use our heal. Are the devs here? Have you ever seen a run like this before? I do get gold rerolls, but the only gold cards I currently have unlocked in the meta are towers and then like a card that doesn't do anything for me, unfortunately. I went away for 20 minutes, the game turned nuts. Hey, what is this? Vampire survivors, Dracula's gonna come and kill me at the end of the game. I don't think so. You send every boss you got, brother. Look how long until we get another uh, draw. Oh my god, we gotta kill 13,000 enemies. 
please, I need the draw. I need the draw, man. Come on. Come on. Holy. Oh! <laughs> You've only gone and done it. I never doubted you. You've now unlocked endless mode. You won't gain any rewards, but you can use it to test your metal. They cut me off. I was too good. Oh! I think we made like $600 that time. Oh, Mad Dog Nation, thank you for the gifted subscriptions. Thank you. Holy. Oh, wait, you're right. It is $904. You can see it right there. Thank you, Mad Dog Nation. Ooh. It, it simply must... Pay dividends. Here comes dividend number one. Huge. Dividend number two. And then even more dividends next turn. No, no, no. Not interested. Very interested. Too late for the jellyfish, though. More dividends than a boomer's portfolio. So true. So true. Boomers do be like, I'm never going to sell any stocks. So I don't care if they go up or down. Just give me 6% yield from Coca-Cola forever. That's extremely tax disadvantage for me. But if it's money in my pocket, bro. It's money in my pocket. I'm not a CFA, by the way. This is just one man's opinion. Boomer, boomers are renowned for saying bro. Boomer doesn't mean anything anymore, though. I'm a boomer. I'm 34 years old. I turned 18 like the same year the first Transformers movie came out. I'm a boomer. Dudes who are 91 years old are boomers. Like, it's the biggest... If you're Gen Z, Boomer is just someone older than you. Probably someone who's, tw like, 27 years old is a Boomer. They're probably doing Gen Z on Gen Z crime, too. I bet if you're a Gen Z that's in high school and there's a Gen Z that's in their first year of college, that's a Boomer to you. I got golden kiwis from Costco today and they're goaded. Thank you for the recommendation. Okay, maybe I am a Boomer. <laughs> Good point. We have to take a chance. <laughs> it has to be a one-up, man. It has to be a one-up. You gotta, you gotta look for it. You gotta look for it. If, yeah, you know, didn't get it. We didn't fucking get it. We didn't fucking get it. Okay, for now, I'm gonna give you this, but I would love to replace it with a one-up. We need a, a one-up here. Let me have my odds. You spelled it half, H-A-L-F. It's H-A-L-V-E when you're using it in that context, for the record. The thing is, B. Watson, former subscriber, now not a subscriber, but the name's locked up here, so you know you typed some messed up stuff in the past. Um, and you've been around for a while, without a doubt. Hang on, this is the, the, the true moment of truth. Huge. Insane. Thank you for sniping all of my stuff so that I could... Oh, no, we're dead. <laughs> Never mind. Either way, listen, it's a gambit, okay? Imagine if you were hungry, and the way that lunch worked is uh, they put two foods in front of you, and you said, I either want it or I don't, okay? Now, if you said, I want pizza for lunch, but you've only got one roll left, you might freeze an Italian sandwich, okay? You're probably not going to freeze, you know, garden salad and bowl of cereal, especially if you got money to burn. But if you're like, I could live with, I really want to see pizza on the next roll, but I could still live with an Italian sandwich. You might freeze that Italian sandwich roll once and then say, let's see how it goes. A green pepper is not as good as a one-up. That being said, it was kind of, you know, it wasn't, it wasn't bad given the context. He hit me with minor spelling error and anime glasses. I mean, if you want to talk about anime glasses, how about hitting me with a green text arrow criticism in Twitch chat? Be me, need a one-up. Some NL choosing between rolling for the thing he needs and freezing the thing he wants, and then hitting none buttons. You think you're the first generation to be rude on the internet? Even my generation didn't invent that shit. Al Gore was out here, like, sneak dissing the Finnish Secretary of State back on DARPA, Okay. Just be careful before you step in the arena. Nobody gets roasted like someone who makes a spelling error in the IRC. So true. The dude who said the internet is a series of tubes 
it's crazy that he gets roasted, right? Because the internet really is at his... Like, I feel like people who were... It's, it's the mid-cell meme. People who were really smart and really dumb were like, it is a series of tubes. People who were like, IQ between 95 and 105 were like, <laughs> it's not a series of tubes at all. People with their PhD in computer engineering were like, at a fundamental level, it really is just a series of tubes. And people who can only think of computers as like big sinks were like, it seems right to me. Now the dude who brought a snowball into the, into Congress. Of uh, national attention, and in, in, in case we have forgotten, because we keep hearing that 2014 has been the warmest year on record, I asked the chair, you know what this is? It's a snowball, and that's just from outside here. So it's very, very cold out, very unseasonal. So here, Mr. President, catch this. Mm -hmm. um, to say that climate change isn't real because he had snow in a thermos. That dude, all parts of the bell curve should be making fun of that guy. Okay? That guy's my representative? No, no. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> I mean, I didn't vote for him. You ever thought about WTF we used to say before this? Like what wording was like before we called everybody little bro? Language changing is really funny. I feel like if we went back if I went back, not that I don't sound like a nerd now, but if I played my current verbiage for me as a 16-year-old, I would definitely think that I had a traumatic brain injury at some point in the intervening period. I would be like, you know, I, I, in, in 11th grade, I'm so erudite and particular about my verbiage, and then at age 34, I'm like, little bro really tried to pop the 4chan green text arrows on me. Little sus, don't you think? But I bet also, like if I went back and played recordings of myself as a little kid, well, as like a 16 year old to myself now, I would be like, yo, this guy's got no bitches. And I would be right, without a doubt. I did see the clip of Corey in a call with his eye doctor and then someone in chat redeemed a uh, sound of on un, un, like 150 decibel ear piercing sound of a woman moaning sensually that his dentist definitely heard. Or not this optometrist, I should say. A lot of things about the way Corey runs his stream are just fundamentally baffling to me. Um, <laughs> without being rude, the man's taking the call with his optometrist, like just on cam. I'm not saying someone's gonna read his lips and be like, wow, this dude's eyes are totally messed up. But like, you just move away from the computer to do it. He's still got audio coming out of his headphones, you know, it's just, I'm just surprised. And then not to mention you could re redeem a 150 decibel ear piercing sound that clearly came from adult content. And then like his chat was open because I raided him after the stream. So the pop out just rolled over into his chat. And it was like uh, somebody just posted an enormous ASCII phallus. And then nobody was like, what's up with the phallus? Everybody was like, oh, blue hole. You, you old dog always posting the, the sussy, you know what? Like it's, it's actual chaos over there. Is it cra more chaos or less chaos than Squeak's chat? It's more chaos than Squeak's chat. Squeak's is like, uh, Corey is like a brand risk, man. Coming from the guy who talks about cum and clone sex. He's literally just playing the audio from pornography on his on his stream, taking phone calls from his doctors with his camera on and stuff like that. Like it's it's some of the people are posting ASCII cocks in his chat and being validated for it. Like it's it, it's out of control over there. Well, 
Just have a video of some important things from my life. The girl texted me the frick back. Yeah, meanwhile, we're talking about REM over here. Is that a professional retreat? Because she played the viola instrument. Hang on, you know what? It is the end of the stream today. I've been on an elegant walk <laughs> through the town where my internship is taking place. So now, back to my hotel where they are keeping me and keeping me nice, steady, calm, good, good sleep, sleep, and a buffet for dinner. <laughs> I have been trying to put in more work, more hours, to prove to them I can work at this company full time after the internship is up. But they say no promises. I say, I promise you this if you check out my mathematics and my calculation at any given time, you're gonna find the mathematic is correct at all time. So that's just how I put in my hard work. Whatever. As they say, bye. It is great, though. It's, it's fantastic. I have some news. Uh, it might not be what you guys are expecting. I've and never seen Maybe you're going to feel some disappointment in me, in my ability. <laughs> but I went to the meeting yesterday. They both say, come in here. And I sit down, whatever. They ask me, do you want a water? I say, sparkling. <laughs> they brought me a flat water. I look at it kind of like this. But it was no big deal. Anyway, long to the cutting of the short, uh, I'm going to have to move my study to part-time because I got the job hey! full-time at the company at my way where my internship is taking place. You guys, thank you so much for your encouragement in the entire journey. And now I got to manage a lot of different kind of life with the job and the school coming back. There's going to be major time that I can handle it. Bye. It's so good. Wait, where's what, what happened to the girl texting you know, me the frick back? One light. Unless you get reincarnation to happen. I work to date for nine hours straight. Then I woke up pretty early. So I still have a lot of the afternoon left. I'm going to go to a movie. Maybe check out Spider-Man. Amazing The Flash. Or... Indiana. It's <laughs> sorry, I just I forgot I was streaming for a minute there. Oh, kiss me every time. Maybe Indiana. Well, did you see Cult of the Lamb Dev Massive Monster says it will delete the roguelike on January first, following Unity's plan to charge game makers per player download? I didn't. Um, I mean, Unity's plan to charge. Developers per player download is one of the most psychotic things I've, I've seen in business, I think, in my entire life. I think that it means that to become a ethical gamer, I will continue to purchase games for sure, but I will never install them. Like Bill Clinton smoked that shit, but he never inhaled. Same thing. Game comes out. First off, I don't, I'm not going to read reviews anymore because reviewers had to install the game, which means that they cost the developers money. Maybe they make up for it on the back end if the review is good, but if the review is bad, that's a serious ethical complication that I'm, I'm honestly just not sure if I'm qualified to deal with. Thank you for letting me live. Buy it and pirate it. Brother, if you, if you pirate it, you're still installing it. I did also see that the CEO of Unity was the same guy who was the CEO of EA when he joked that they were going to charge users a dollar to reload their gun in... Battlefield <laughs> is just the most insane, like, completely idiotic. Like, the guy's been in the games industry for 20 years. I'm not saying he's... He might be great at being a CEO from a business perspective. He's tr I imagine that... Uh, listen, this is very efficient market hypothesis, Pilled, okay? But, like, I'm imagining Unity stock probably looks a lot like every tech company stock, which is like 2018, 2019, it did fine. And then in 2020, it was like, ah, and then it was like, whoa. And then it would like, since then, it's just been like, sorry, I'm on the wrong side. But I don't know, maybe he's making the, the brips brippier and the dips ain't so dippy. I don't, I'm not really qualified to discuss it. It's not really my area of expertise. Unity has lost $750 in market cap since the announcement. 
So listen, like, fuck Unity. But at the same time, I hate when people do that. Because, like, the market just... I mean, you could say that about... There, there were days last year that NASDAQ was down, like, 3% in a day. Google didn't do shit. You'd be like, they lost, like, $400 billion in market cap today. It's not all... You know, there's ebbs and flows, some of which maybe are more likely to relate to announcements than others. I always laugh whenever, like... Uh, you know, Nintendo announces Pikmin 3, and people were like, Nintendo stock surging! They've added $108 million in market cap! And you're like, it's because Jerome Powell was wearing a blue suit, bro. You don't even, you don't know what you're talking about. Sorry, I'm getting too, too real about it. Tell that to the CEO who sold a huge amount of stock before announcing the changes. I saw that it was 2,000 shares, okay? Someone in chat said 50,000. One of us is right, or maybe we're both wrong. I was going to say the dude probably has like eight private jets. 2,000 shares of Unity stock is not going to move the needle for him. He was probably buying groceries, okay? It was 75,000 bucks in shares. You don't want me to give my opinion on that. I'm just saying. <laughs> if a dude you've been following on Wall Street Bets sold 2,000 shares before he told you to buy, then you would be like, what the hell, bro? You rugged me. But if a... If John Ricciatello does it, I mean, he's probably... That was written into a schedule like 18 months ago or something. I'm not just saying you have to hand it to him, by the way. In work is going to send me to a new city to put me up in one of the nicest hotel chain available on this current date, Hyatt. And I'm not going to check out the hot tub after I'm done with all of my work during the date. You got another thing on your mind, my friend. <laughs> <laughs> I love to check out the different opportunity that is available at any kind of hotel. Me too, I have actually. A spa available. I got myself a facial last week. <laughs> okay, all right. <laughs> We've all been there. Don't ask me where it. It was very nice. So this is not just a regular Hyatt. And this is not paid promotion to the people that are thinking I'm doing this. This is a Hyatt Centret. That is part of the chain that put the hotel in the center of the city. So. Hello. A bunch of stuff for my railing. Skibbity Toilet beat us. New episode of Skibbity Toilet today. What? I gotta... Can we put on uh, emote mode, please? No spoilers. ML ranking dropping faster than Unity stock. Hang on. Google Finance Unity. And then... Set duration. 2023, 22, 21... Tw okay. Five years. Oh, I don't think so. Um... Unity stock was at $196.65 on November 12th, 2021. And now it's at $36.82. There, uh, I mean, I think that's like an 85% decrease if you really cherry pick the data. My ranking is merely down like 2%. Did they stock split? No, it was just everything tech related went insane during the pandemic and then like got insanely destroyed after the pandemic and then they're still like you know figuring it out they also didn't go public till post pandemic what are you talking about willis they went public oh well it depends what you consider post pandemic <laughs> september 18th 2020 i guess i would call that peri pandemic how is uh, our baby Oh, she's, she's feeling a little better? Does she need another nap or no? Okay. I will send them over to you. I could use another nap. Me too, brother. On Sunday, honestly, I was burned out from childcare stuff. So I said, I'm not getting, fuck getting up at 5.20 a.m. on a Sunday. I'm gonna sleep in till seven even. When I woke up at seven even, I was like, this is amazing. I can see why people wake up at this time on a normal day. <laughs> so I think it's crazy that Mark Wahlberg wakes up at 2.30 a.m. I mean, that's just psychotic. At some point, you're not getting any extra juice out of the fruit when you squeeze it. Like, 5.20 a.m. is early. You don't have to be up at 2.30. 
At some point, it's deleterious for you to be tired at like, you know, dinner time. At like 4.15 p.m. He goes to sleep at 7.30. I know, it's, it's insanity. That's like before Jeopardy's on. It's deranged. It is. <laughs> I mean, yeah, you're not getting any more time. I guess you... I will say when you have kids, kind of the only thing you could do is either get up early or stay up late to add more you time to your day. 30 minutes of golf is kind of crazy. Hey, do you ever see the video of uh, Mark Wahlberg or the, the picture of Mark Wahlberg and he's golfing with Tiger Woods, but he has a Bluetooth earpiece in? It's just disrespectful, man. Like, I'm not saying you have to, like, bow down and be like, oh, thank you, Tiger, thank you, thank you. But you're literally golfing with, like, possibly the greatest golfer of all time. And you're like, hang on, I gotta take this. Like, what could be more important to you as someone who enjoys golf than a round of in uninterrupted golf with Tiger Woods? Burp, burp, burp. Uh, Mark, we tried to make the t-shirts even tighter in the chest, but the, the seamstress says she can't make them that tight or she'll get arrested. Those are AirPods, brother? That's even worse. Hey, I got a bone to pick with Gen Z, by the way, okay? And actually, I see a lot of boomers doing this too. If you're a teenager, whatever, I understand. You like hate your family, and if your family's good, maybe later you'll come back and be like, I love them again. But for now, you're like resenting them. That's okay. What have they ever done for you except provide for you in your life? Regardless, stop. If you're an adult Zoomer, stop wearing AirPods when you're out with your family or your girlfriend. It's crazy. I see all these couples walking around and then one of the dude usually has an AirPod in. What are you doing? What are you doing? You got to spend some quality time, man. I remember, I, so on Saturday, I think it was Saturday. It's either Saturday or Sunday. I get a text from Ryan. And it says, Pog you! And I was like, oh, what happened? Out of nowhere, he goes, Pog you! I'm like, oh. Did he, like, get, like, did he, did he get something for free? Did he get a gift card or something? I don't know what happened. And then he said, I just made a friend! I'm like, what? I thought, I honestly thought he made, like, the shirt buddy. Like, oh, shirt buddy! Shane! Shirt buddy! I said, I said to him, Did you find another bald guy? And then, he said, nah! I met a real friend. So I said, how? And then, like, we were in the library, and then, uh, this couple approached us and we talked and they're both doctors and they live nearby and they have a daughter same age as luna and they want to send same school as us and you know we talked and like we mingled and we exchanged phone numbers i'm like whoa you exchange phone numbers and he's like yeah i'm like yo that's crazy shit and he's like, I know, he gave me his number. I'm like, whoa. But he, Ryan was so psyched that he made friends. And he's like, oh my gosh. He said, like, this might be, this might be the uprising. <laughs> and I said, were they bald? And he said, no. And I'm like, were they white? And he was like, no. I'm like, oh, strange. <laughs> I was like, I thought, you know, I thought like the bald bros stick together, or maybe I thought, he, you know, maybe the dad was white, and like white bros stick together, I don't know. But he was apparently not bald, not white. He was just Asian dude. I'm like, of course he's Asian, he's a doctor. <laughs> I thought that was a thing. Come on, Chad. Do you really disagree that the bald bro thing is a fake? Bald bro is definitely a thing. Bald bro stick together, man. Ed Corey, oh my gosh. I am bald, very true. It was it was a very logical questioning. It would have been weird if I if I, if Ryan went, hey, I just went out and made a friend. If I go, is he Asian? There was no base on that question. I'm like. Why would I ask him is if he's a ba if if he's Asian? It was logical to ask if he was bald and or white. 
Dude, bald bros is a thing. I'm telling you, as I have been next to bald guy for 11 years, bald bros stick together. Uh, what was it when we were in Mexico? I, I He said, do you want a drink? And I said, yeah. And then it took longer than the usual when he got the drink. And I said, oh, that took kind of long. Was the line really long? And then Ryan said, nah, I just made a friend. And I said, what? And then from the stairs, a sunburned, bald dude, middle age, dancing like crazy, comes up, gives a huge fist bump to Ryan, and they go, ha ha! And then, just, and then the dude just keep dancing, walking away. And I said, was that your friend? And he's like, yeah, ball buddy. And I said, what is going on, dude? So it's, it's not baseless question. It happened last year. So that's why I asked. I thought another ball guy gave him a fist bump and made a friend. I thought that was the thing. They just saw Luna and we're like, we gotta talk to this cute kid. <laughs> totally, dude. You know when other people, they go, oh, Kate, you're so cute. And I'm like, shut up. You're just being annoying. But then my daughter, she said, daddy is a funny guy. And I said, yeah, that is a funny guy. And then she said, mommy is very cute. And I'm like, oh, my gosh. She struck my heart. Bull, bullseye. Pew. Like, mommy's cute. And she goes, mommy is very cute. I'm like, oh, my gosh. Now I'm legally cute. And then she also just said he's hairy. And I'm like, she's not wrong. And then yesterday, Ryan said, okay, daddy's gonna go to bed. Good night. And she said, she basically rapped so fast. She said, okay, good night. Have a good night. I love you. Have a good dream. Bye. Like she just sped so fast. Like, and then, and then she finished it off with saying, goodbye, messy guy. Then the writer said, what? Like, she's like, she was giggling like, hee hee, goodbye, messy guy. <laughs> and then Ryan threw a, like a tiny cushion to her face. And that made her laugh even harder. And then, and then she's like, goodbye, messy guy. And then, like, and then he kept throwing this tiny pillow on her face, and she's laughing, and she's keep giving the pillow back to Ryan. And then, like, she kept saying, goodbye, messy guy. <laughs> it was so funny. First, it was funny because Ryan was throwing soft thing at our child's face, and that made her laugh. And she kept saying goodbye, messy guy. And I don't even know, like, why, where she thought Ryan's a messy guy. I mean, it's not, not true. But I never said, like, hi, you messy guy. <laughs> I never, you know, I never said that to Ryan. So she herself must have thought, like, wow, my dad is a messy guy. For her to say, my hi, messy guy, or goodbye, messy guy. She probably saw his desk. Oh, no. You know, also, she started to uh, ask me trivia question. Not trivia question, but, you know, like, she was, she was like, Mommy, do you know what the opposite of soft is? I'm like, what the hell? This two-year-old girl is questioning me. I'm like, what is op what is the opposite of soft? And she said, spiky. <laughs> I was like, <laughs> I'm like, yeah, I can see, I can see spiky being the opposite of soft. It made me laugh. And I said, well, technically, the opposite of soft is rough. You know, like rough texture, like the tree. Trees are rough. You know, the cement floor, it's rough. That's actually the opposite of soft. And she said, oh, yeah. And then, uh, and I said, 
Do you know what the opposite of day is? Do you remember? And she said, no. And I said, it's night. Or, wait. <laughs> when I'm like, the... yeah, night, night, day, day and night. It was a night. And she said, oh, it's not. Um, oh, shit, now, wait. Wait, what? Wait, hold on. It's, it's night. Day and night. Chet? Chet? <laughs> day and day and night. Dude, what the hell? Why are you doing this? What is this? Google? What is the opposite of day? Night! What? It's night! It's night! But Chet, you're the one who made me second out! Why are you going like yes? Huh? You! You! You gaslit me! You gaslit me and I got gaslit and then you go, oh my gosh, okay, what's wrong with you? Well, because you guys were... Because <laughs> you guys were... You guys were like, huh? What did I join uh, into now? Like you guys, as if I was like so dumb. I was only uncertain because Chet was giving me the whole cat. Like, huh? Like, what's she talking about? If Chet was like, yeah, go on with the story, that I would have, I would have been like, yeah, as the story goes. But then Chet was like, well, what, what, what? Did you just say the night is the opposite of day? What, what? So if Chet spent, oh my gosh. What kind of logic is that if Chet spams home while you were trying to save your baby, would you stop? No, because why would I have Twitch Chet up when I'm trying to save my baby? But if I'm, if I say something and then Chet goes like, whoa, like giving that kind of reaction, I second down myself like, wait, what the hell? Did I do something wrong? Oh my God, stop it. This, this is, this is how... The guest lighting happens. The spiral of guest guest lit. All I'm saying was, I was like, oh, do you know the opposite of day is night? And then she's like, oh, I don't remember. I'm like, well, that's the trick when you always, they always ask you a trick question at school. Because when they say, what's the uh, opposite of night? And then many kids will answer morning. But it's not, it's not morning time. It's daytime. That's the little trick one. You know, that was the conversation, that was the story. No, if I say, hey, Chet, my name is Kate. And then if Chet goes, huh? Then I would be like, oh, is there something wrong with my mic? Did I not say that right? You know, I would be, I would be concerned. Not asking questions about my name, but I would be like, wait, is something wrong? The word K offices their heart. Oh my god. At almost any point of a conversation, if you unleash the huh cat into the chat, there's no streamer who would not be confused. That's just insta confusion, dude. Look at it. Look at this huh cat. We gotta limit the number of huh cats in chat. This cat is too powerful. This is this is the most. It's like I'm in a room trapped, and the whole surface of this room is the whole cat gif. It's because whenever Ryan streams, Ryan says something, and the chat goes like, "Huh, huh," and even Ryan gets rattled when chat gets "huh" after he says something. It's true, dude. It's insta confusion. It's insta rattle. Why is this cat? Why is that cat so powerful? We have to lower its power strength. One cat has no power, but many, many huh cats have so much power. Guess <laughs> Leak Era. Dude, this cat is too much. It's like, I gotta stop looking at the chat. I'm almost getting hypnotized. Ah! Stop, please! I come back. 
After a wisdom teeth pull, I come back and the chat hits me with a wall of hog cat. If I, if you find, if you find me dead on the floor, you know the cause of death. Cause of death. Too much hog cat. I just realized what the worst way for me to go. Some weird death that will make my doctor go, who? And my death. That gotta be the worst way to go. Mouth uses salt to activate his beard, not those spice up the beard, not actual spice. Not literal spice. Isn't salt also a a part of spice? Is a category of spice? Don't don't haunt me. This is not a good cycle. Salt is not spice. Who said that? A maker of salt said no. Scandinavians agree salt is spice. Let's go. MVP that guy. He's my favorite person. What? No, but you hit me with the hot cat. Why would you do that? I'm weak. I'm weak against the hot cat. It's 333. Oh my gosh. 333 three, three. it means someone is thinking about me <laughs> oh i think it's true i feel like there are lots of people thinking about me right now no stop with the hot cat i can't take it anymore what the hell i just try to make a joke that's all i try to do I should have not pulled my wisdom teeth out. I knew it. I lost so much of my brain cell. I never feel so dumb. My wife's got a, uh, she's got a, a yellow moon on Discord. What am I supposed to do? I saw it in the I saw it say. Yellow moon means she's away. None of you stand so tall. Yellow moon means no Discord call. It's a yellow moon. Yeah, you know what I'm talking about? Yellow, yellow, yellow moon. 